Welcome to Steel Metallurgy 1, The Basics. I'm Michael Pfeiffer, Principal Consultant and Trainer at Industrial Metallurgists. In this video, I will explore the state of steel engineering, its properties, production processes, and applications. Steel is an important part of human civilization. We've, had it, we've been using it for thousands of years, and we're at a point now where our knowledge about it has enabled making great products and producing steel in, in huge quantities. So let's delve into this fascinating material. In steel, iron is the main element, and then various alloying elements are added depending on the type of steel. <clears throat> in most steels, the most important alloying element present is carbon. Other alloying elements include manganese, silicon, and copper, and some alloys, nickel, chromium, aluminum, and other alloying elements are added. The alloying element added depends on the desired properties of the steel. Speaking of properties, I want to touch briefly on the different properties that we're concerned with. People tend to think about steel for its strength and hardness and ductility and, and toughness, but there's also other, other properties that are important. We also, can, when we're selecting materials for, to use in components, we have to think about the properties with respect to ease of fabrication of the component. How easy is it to stamp a sheet steel into the component or machine a steel into the component or forge it or cold head it or use other fabrication processes. Also ease of joining. If we have to join two pieces of steel by welding or brazing, we want to think about the, the, the steel, the, the alloy that, that will best be able to join using these processes. Also reliability, corrosion resistance, wear resistance, fatigue resistance, and creep resistance are important for many applications, as well as cost. And finally, sometimes physical properties are important, density and thermal conductivity. So when selecting a steel to use for a particular application, we have to consider all of these properties. And we can engineer steels to have many of the different properties that we need in, for a particular application. So the properties can be engineered by engineering the, the steel's alloy composition, its microstructure, and the different manufacturing processes that are used on the, on, the, on the steel. This includes thermal and mechanical manufacturing processes. So steel metallurgy, in fact, all metal metallurgy is concerned with the properties of a metal and how the properties are influenced by its composition and its microscopic structures. Microscopic structures refers to things like grains and phases and other microscopic things that we can't see with the naked eye, but they're that these, these microscopic structures have a huge influence on the properties of the metal. And so controlling, getting, getting the microscopic structures we want and controlling those structures is important in order to get the properties we want. And this also applies to steel. And then finally, there's the manufacturing processes that are used on the metal. The manufacturing processes combined with the composition influence these, these microscopic structures. So by understanding composition and microscopic structures and manufacturing processes and their influence on the properties, we're able to design manufacturing processes that are able to produce the metal to meet the, to have the properties that we want. And we're also able to um, engineer components by selecting the materials that are used in them and selecting the processes that are used on those materials in order to get the desired properties. So with steel, thinking about composition, we have all the carbon is the main alloying element. And we have these other alloying elements that can be added for different purposes. And we add those different alloying elements based upon the requirements for the particular steel being made. Microscopic structures refers to a lot of different things. There's some terminology that hopefully that you're a little bit familiar with if you work with steels, because these are important terms that are used by metallurgists and people involved in steel making all the time. And they are, it's important to understand these terms when we're discussing uh, steel selection and processes, and also when we're talking, when we're trying to solve problems. So the phases present in the steel and grain size and other things are important microscopic structures, and they're present in all steels. And finally, there's a different manufacturing processes that are used on steels. There's a number of different heat treatments and mechanical treatment. Some of them are done by mills. Some of them are done uh, after, after a component has been fabricated and there's a final heat treatment. Regardless, we use these heat treatments to modify the microscopic structures in order to modify the properties. So by understanding the composition we need and by understanding the micro manufacturing processes that are used on the steel, we can get the properties that are needed for a particular application. What does all of this knowledge do for us? Well, this knowledge has enabled two specific things that are critical for this for, for our, our, our civilization. One is the 
the development of just ultra high volume steel production processes. The, the knowledge of, of the steel metallurgy, these things discussed here, has enabled development of, of highly automated processes that are able to produce a tremendous amount of steel every single day. And the steel consistently meets the requirements for the, for the customer's use. It also enables us to an engineer a wide range of components with a wide range of properties for a wide range of applications. There are two processes for making steel. One is uh, uh, steel is made at an integrated mill and the other is steel is made at a mini mill. Um, with the integrated mill, iron ore is converted to pig iron and at a mini mill, scrap is the main source. With an integrated mill, um, Iron ore is used, is it, it's, uh, iron ore is, is it, uh, put into, into the blast furnace along with coke and limestone. This reaction occurs and what's produced is pig iron, it's molten iron with this composition. It has a high carbon, high silicon, high manganese, and also uh, impurities in it. Then the, the, the pig iron is then further processed to get the steel, molten steel in a, in a, in a state ready for, for casting. At a mini mill, an electric arc furnace is used um, along with scrap metal. The scrap metal is loaded into the arc furnace and the steel is melted and then, this, then uh, further processing is done to the steel and then it's ready for casting. A common casting process is continuous casting. This involves putting the molten metal into a ladle and the, ladle, uh, the steel goes into a ton dish and into a copper mold where the steel uh, solidifies. And this shows a continuous casting line. And with continuous casting, we produce slab, which is used to produce plate and strip, blooms, which is used to produce large sections such as beams, and billets, which is used to produce tubing, pipe, bar, and other long products. Sometimes the, uh, the, the, the molten steel is cast into an ingot. This involves pouring the molten steel into large molds. This is used when, when a non-standard alloy grade is being made or when the quantities don't justify continuous casting. And it's also used for producing very large components. There are five general families of steels. It's carbon, low alloy steel, high strength low alloy steel, tool steel, and, st and stainless steel. The particular type of steel depends on the composition, the carbon content, and the different alloying elements that are added to the steel. We can create, and within each different category of steel, there are also several different classes of steel based upon the alloy composition and the microstructure that's developed in the steel due to heat treating and other processing. So heat treating is used to modify a steel's microstructure to get specific properties. That is strength, hardness, fatigue resistance, and so on. And a heat treatment involves heating the steel up, holding it at a certain temperature for a certain period of time, and then cooling it. In some cases, the cooling rate is important. In other times, in other, other heat treatments, it, it's not. And we're using, in, in many cases, these heat treatment to cause a what's called a phase transformation, to go from one or two phases to a different phase. So this is showing going from ferrite and cementite to martensite. Um, not all heat treatments involve phase transformations. These phase transformations, regardless of the heat treatment, um, the the purpose of the heat treatment is to is to get a certain microstructure and to get certain properties in the steel. So examples of heat treatment are hot rolling, which is actually a heat treatment and a thermal and a mechanical treatment, annealing. There's three different annealing processes, normalizing, uh, through hardening, which involves three different with the, for which there are three different processes, and case hardening. There's three different case hardening processes. Hot rolling involves rolling the steel at, at high temperatures. The purpose is to reduce the thickness of the steel, break down the cast microstructure, and develop a uniform grain structure, which was then results in the desired mechanical properties. Full annealing and normalizing involve heating the steel to form austenite, which involves heating to between 1450 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit for, for carbon steels with less than eight tenths percent carbon. The purpose of a full anneal is to reduce the strength and increase the ductility for easier form, forming and machining. And the cooling step for this heat treatment involves a slow cool. The steel is cooled in the furnace. With normalizing, 
The purpose is to create a uniform microstructure and or obtain specific mechanical properties. And in this case, the steel is cooled, uh, is air cooled, which is a faster cool compared to the full annealed. Both, uh, um, both heat treatments involve a, 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 a result in, in forming a microstructure similar to the one shown here. Though the furnace cool, these black lines, which are plates of cementite, are, are thicker and more widely spaced. And with normalizing, they're thinner and smaller and more narrowly spaced. And that difference results in different properties between a full anneal and normalizing. And quenching and tempering involves heating a steel to 1800, 1500 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. This would be for carbon steels, then fast cooling the steel in water, oil, or some other quenchant, and then tempering the steel, heating it between 250 to 1250 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the alloy and the desired final properties. During this, uh, this heat treatment, um, it, it's typically used with steels that consist of ferrite and cementite, and the purpose is to form martensite. In the as quenched state, martensite is, is very strong. It's also brittle, and the purpose of the tempering is to reduce the brittleness. This table shows the typical plain carbon uh, steel properties for different carbon contents for different heat treatments. So we have normalized versus quenched and tempered. Um, and we can see that for any particular carbon content, the quenched and tempered steel has higher hardness and higher strength. And that as the carbon content is increased, the strength and the hardness of, of the steel increases, whether it's normalized or it's quenched and tempered. So this table is a nice uh, example demonstrating the, 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 um, the effects of carbon content and heat treatment in the resulting microstructure on the properties of the steel. There are several different forms of steel available for making different components and structures. There's plate, sheet, tube, bar, also rod and wire and pipe. And there are a wide variety of applications in which steel is used. Construction, automotive, infrastructure, appliances and consumer goods, aerospace and defense, toys, medical devices, and many others. Um, so steel is a very versatile material. There are a lot of different levers available for, for modifying steels in order to get different properties for meeting the different applications. So if you're interested in learning more about steel metallurgy, consider taking our steel metallurgy fundamentals training. In this training, you'll learn about steel alloys and steel alloy designations, phases and common microstructures present in steels, steel heat treatments, the effects of carbon content and heat treating on steel microstructure, the effects of carbon content and microstructure on steel strength, hardness and toughness, and many more things related to steel metallurgy. Our training will give you a solid understanding of steel metallurgy fundamentals so that you'll be better equipped to make decisions and solve problems related to steel. This includes component design, supplier evaluation, solving product failures, and solving supplier and production quality problems. Also, you just have bet more productive conversations with suppliers, customers, and metallurgical lab labs since you'll, since you'll have a better understanding of steel metallurgy vocabulary and an understanding of the steel terminology. I hope you found this video to be um, educational. Please send questions at my my email or my phone or give me a call and finally if you did enjoy it please like share with you know using social media and subscribe to our channel and other other um other things that we offer so thanks for watching bye